Hi and welcome back to a new video. Last week we were analyzing the Asus X Noctua RTX 3070, which is a very, very impressive card when it comes to like performance, noise levels and everything. There was also quite some confusion from my side when it comes to comparison of the Noctua edition versus the 3070 Tough Gaming and the 3070 Dual. I finally also got my Dual, which I actually ordered like days before the 3070 Noctua edition arrived, but it didn't make it in time, but I got it now. So we can still compare the 3070 Dual cooler to the Noctua cooler. Originally, I thought this would also be the identical heatsink to the Tough Gaming, which is also not the case. The PCB is the same, as far as I can tell. I still didn't open the card, but it should be the same PCB on all three cards, but the cooler is different on all three cards. But at least we can compare the coolers between the cards and we can also do a fan swap because a lot of people were also happy about that this is, it's basically a normal fan shroud that can hold normal 120 millimeter fans. And a lot of people requested what would happen if we just swap the brownish fans to some black Chromex fans. So I ordered these. We can do fan swap, we can do cooler swap, compare some stuff. And also now that Noctua got back to me, thank you very much for this information. We can compare the tough gaming cooler to the Noctua edition cooler. Today's video is supported by Hetzner with the dedicated root server AX41. The experienced data center provider Hetzner offers its hosting products for private and business clients with data centers in Germany and Finland. While offering the most recent and best technical standards, Hetzner also focuses on ecological use of hardware and runs 100% green electricity. The AX41 is a brilliant entrance dedicated root server and comes by default with the 6 core AMD Ryzen 3600 64GB memory and two 512GB NVMe drives. The entire rack design and also the cooling solutions are developed in-house at Hetzner here in Germany and with 24-7 support, high-speed internet connection, DDoS protection and unlimited traffic. Find more in the link below. First of all, the comparison between the Tough Gaming heatsink and the Noctua Edition heatsink. The issue is that when I compared the coolers, just judging by pictures from online, I only had the image from above and not from the side, so it was not possible to compare the height. But looking at the top right picture, which is the Tough Gaming heatsink, you can see it has a height of uh, about 33 millimeter. And looking at, on the bottom right, the Noctua heatsink has a height of about 43 millimeters. So just the increase of about 10 millimeter in height will already drastically increase the heatsink surface area. And that already just without any changes to the heat pipe placement would already be a good increasement in the surface area and lead to better performance. But I also changed the heat pipe placement of the heatsink. Tough Gaming has about 22 millimeter distance between heat pipes and the Noctua cooler has 25.7 millimeter distance between the heat pipes on the heatsink. So yeah, that should in theory help to spread the heat more evenly on the heatsink, which is also bigger. And these are the changes that Noctua helped Asus with. While the 3070 Dual keeps heating up for our test to check the noise level, we can take a closer look at the fan shroud again because I saw some confusion, at least in some comments regarding the state of these fans. Those are really just the normal retail fans. You can see there's a fan adapter inside here where you can see the, the four pin cables. So those are really just the normal four pin PWM fans from Noctua and we can easily swap them to any other fans because there's nothing done to them, like no modifications whatsoever. About 15 minutes later, quick comparison, we can immediately spot that the GPU clock on the 3070 Dual is slightly higher, about 40 to 50 megahertz, which is also a result of using the Q profile on the 3070 Noctua edition, which means that it's clocking a little bit lower to keep the noise level lower. But on the 3070 Dual, already the GPU temperature is higher by about 6 degrees Celsius and the fan speed is also higher, closing in to 2000 RPM on both fans and the power draw is roughly identical. Just subjectively talking, this card is already quite a bit louder. Yeah, and confirmed in our noise testing, it's about 13 dBA louder than the Noctua edition. Here we have our NF F12 swap fans to swap them with the A12 fans. But I also want to point out that even though we are swapping to black fans for this position right here, the fan shroud itself still has like a brownish tint to it. And uh, as I said before, I'm actually a big fan of this design. It, it just looks absolutely awesome. It just, it looks like it's a very high performance card. 
And yeah, not sure how good this will look with uh, black fans, but we will check it. By the way, we don't need these rubber feet. I first thought those will help like noise tempering, but then I figured out that the fan is in direct contact. You can spot that like right here, that the fan has direct contact to these feet right here. And also due to the like sticky pad in between, this will not usually have direct contact to the heatsink. So I guess we can just not use them. Not even five minutes later, fans are swapped. I used an extension cord on the right fan, which is included in the fan. And for the left one, I used just the short cable. This actually needed or should be like three, four millimeters longer than this would perfectly fit like right through here and then go to the fan hub. But I guess this will still work without any issues. It looks quite all right, I guess. I personally also think that the original look suits it better because of the like brownish tint. But yeah, let's just check temperatures and noise levels. It's definitely not bad. And here we can also see that there's a small gap between the fan and the heatsink itself. So comparing to the A12 fans, that was just one dB louder, which for my setup is definitely measurement tolerance. Just to double check, the temperature is about the same as what we had before with uh, the Noctua card. The clock is slightly lower than on the dual card. Now comparing the F12 fans to the A12 fans, this is an increased fan speed of about 30 to 40 RPM, I would say, on the F12 fans. But that's still absolutely okay and the power draw is still the same. Both A12 and F12 fans absolutely de delivered when it comes to performance and noise levels. Something we absolutely wouldn't do, obviously, is uh, swapping the fans to some weird RGB fans. Well, as you can see, these fans are also quiet. Looking at the data, these could also be the F12 fans. It's pretty much identical. I mean, if it's 10 RPM difference, that could be measurement error anyway. If we now compare our three different fans we use, we can definitely see that the A12, the originally used fans from Noctua, are performing by far the best with about 33 dBA. And the two other fans, the F12 and the Corsair ML fans, both have about 34 dBA. But I also have to point out for this type of set setup I have, this is definitely within measurement tolerance. And just subjectively speaking, I cannot tell a difference and even from this distance the card is still running on 100% fan load and like I cannot really hear anything apart from the slight coil whine I can hear from the card but fan wise cannot hear anything and that also shows that the major advantage you have from getting this card is the heatsink. That's also why I'm not going to swap the heatsink from the dual to the Noctua edition because the PCB is the same and the major difference will be the ability to mount big fans, which can definitely uh, push more air through your heatsink and at the same time have a heatsink with a much bigger surface area. That's the major advantage you have on the Noctua card. And it's a great card. You can definitely get this one. I'm not sure about the swapping fan thing. If you really hate the brownish fans, you can swap it with the F12. That would definitely work if that's a thing for you. I wouldn't do it with like an RGB mod. It just, it just doesn't look nice. But yeah, performance-wise, it's still a very good card. I just wish that Noctua and Asus would do it for different models and not just 3070, but maybe also like 3080 Ti, 3090 Ti, if it ever makes it to the market. Um, I guess that would be quite awesome. I was thinking about swapping the heatsink to like a 3080, 3080 Ti, whatever. But first of all, I don't have a card here and also the PCB layout of these cards, like the high-end cards is different to the 3070. That's why this probably wouldn't work. All right, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye-bye.